What's up guys? It's Steph Hendel. Woo! I am here to show you and share with you something that I read in the media today that I know is going to really help you along your weight loss and your health journey. This is something so important to know. I had to yell about it. <laughs> so important. So here's the article that I was reading. I'm going to um, jump over here to my computer really quick. Okay. So the article is called Four Foods that burn belly fat, right? So that's like, yep, everybody's messaging me, asking me, hey, how do I burn belly fat? How do I lose belly fat? How do I reduce belly fat? So this article here, if you were to go according to this, um, not one of these four foods is milk. And it says, it turns out that milk may really do the body good when it comes to belly fat. A 2010 study by researchers at the University of Alabama at Birmingham found that among a group of more than 100 premenopausal women, fat was significantly reduced in those who consumed the most calcium-rich foods. In fact, for every 100 milligrams of calcium they consumed per day, and then in parentheses they put, that's half a cup of a soft serve frozen yogurt. They lost an inch of abdominal fat. Okay, so number one, milk is very inflammatory, especially when it is processed milk. So um, when you're trying to lose belly fat, uh, milk is, if you are consuming uh, processed milk, you're going to notice that your abdomen, your abdominals are going to be bloated and puffy. Why? Because it's processed, because it's actually stripped of calcium. So that's another big fact right there is you don't, the article is saying that you'll get calcium from consuming this milk. And I'm going to tell you about a way that you can consume milk in just a second um, and get some, get good results. But honestly, I'm going to give you an even better alternative. So number one, <laughs> this article is saying that to reduce belly fat, you should drink milk, but there is no differentiation that they made about what kind of milk to drink. And number two, it's giving the example of soft serve frozen yogurt. And it's talking about the calcium we get from these things. Um, number one, you're not going to get the kind of calcium that you want from a processed dairy product, um, especially a non-organic processed dairy product. And it's going to add extra bloat to the body and the belly. Um, and you'll find that actually a lot of people who consume raw organic dairy are fine and the bloat doesn't happen. So that's a little thing that maybe if you love dairy products, you just don't want to give them up, um, you can try that. That might really serve you and that might really help you in your body. Um, so organic, raw dairy is amazing. When I consume dairy products, for the most part, it's that. Um, but number two, like frozen yogurt, in, for an example, it's probably one of the least healthy foods you could possibly consume. And they're, in this article, they're saying, you know, a cup of frozen yogurt a day, right? Or like yogurt in general. That's another one. A yogurt is such a, a deemed as like a health food. And honestly, <laughs> yogurt is, unless it's like a really high quality organic kind of yogurt, it's going to leave you bloated and inflamed. And inflammation in the body is one of the reasons why it's so hard to lose weight. So it's kind of counterintuitive, right? Um, so then the second part of this that I said I was going to give you some extra information, Claude says, very interesting, right? Yeah, that's good to know because this article is telling you the exact opposite. And actually, when you dig really deep into the wording that they had on there, you'll see that they didn't, they labeled it milk, but they were talking about calcium. And you can get calcium from so many better sources than that. You can get it in leafy green vegetables, super high in calcium. Um, there's much better ways to consume calcium than just milk, especially the fact that they didn't differentiate that it's got to be high quality milk. So these are things that are really important to, to take note to for somebody who wants to lose weight, who's taking these articles as an authority, right? Then you're like reading this and you're like, okay, cool. Well, I just need to drink more milk. Not exactly. You got to dig a little deeper and you have to have a uh, knowledge of what actually truly is healthy. So when you know that, then you can differentiate. And so that is super important. That's a number one thing to do is don't trust everything you read in the media that's telling you what's healthy and what's not. What you really want to do 
is find somebody who is skilled and knowledgeable in this, right? So there's little, little turning points. And then the second part that I said I would get to is the thing that doesn't even have to do with the food, right? It's how you consume things via your mind. So when you're consuming food physically and you're actually eating it, there is a big factor that happens for a lot of women who are trying to lose weight where they're guilting themselves about what they're eating or they're beating themselves up about their food choices or they're judging themselves or they're feeling uh, bad or weird. And honestly, your emotional state determines your body. So if you believe something to be um, really, truly nourishing and healthy for you, it's going to metabolize that way in the body. If you believe something to be really unhealthy for you, like, oh my God, I shouldn't have eaten that slice of pizza. Oh my God, I shouldn't have had that burger, oh my God, I shouldn't have had that, whatever, you're going to sabotage yourself and your body will hear your thoughts and metabolize that food very differently than if you were to eat it in a very loving way. So the other factor to this that that article didn't even touch on and didn't even address, and I find that almost every article that I read on the internet and in the media and in magazines and newspapers and everything, None of them are talking about the most important thing here, and that is emotional fitness. That is being able to work your mindset on a daily basis and teach yourself and train yourself how to lose weight via changing your thoughts. And so energetically, when you have extra, if belly fat is the thing you want to lose, energetically, that is, um, we call it the fat lifesaver, right? So it's like you're wearing a lifesaver around your stomach, around your waist, and that lifesaver is Somebody puts that kind of fat on their body in that specific space and take note that wherever you are holding fat on your body is a direct result of the mindset and the emotions that you are holding. Fat is protection and we wear it as protection. This is also something that this article never addressed, that most articles never address, is that Fat is protection. We put on fat because we feel like we need to protect ourselves from something, someone, some opportunity, some whatever. So uh, when you're wearing fat around your stomach, we call that the fat life saver, fat life preserver. Um, that's you trying to protect yourself and save yourself and put on a life saver because you're feeling like things are hard. And honestly, this is where I see the most rapid, drastic, amazing, wonderful, unbelievable weight loss happen is when you start working yourself out emotionally, emotional fitness on a daily basis, more so than the physical workouts and the food. When you're addressing this stuff on a daily basis, that is where you get the massive, massive results. That's when weight just strips off the body in an almost unbelievable way. Because as you can imagine, if you let go of the need to have to protect yourself and to have to wear a life preserver and wear fat as protection, then you let go of the need to hold on to that fat anymore. We store fat in our body, in our cells, and um, we're just holding it with all this deep, painful emotion. So it's really important to let that go in order for you to thrive in your life and go to your next level because really you're here to make a big difference and a big impact in this world. And when you are going out there and you're just holding this fat as protection, it's holding you back from doing that. And that's what's most important. So I hope this information was really helpful for you. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you find confusing in the media right now. Like what's something that you're hearing or reading or you're learning about certain trends and it's just confusing you. You don't know what to do. There's too much information or too little information or you don't know if it's true. Um, leave me a comment below and let me know what that is for you and I can help you with that. So my key here is that I just really want to help you to feel the best and the healthiest you possibly can so you can go to that next level because as human beings, we love growth and we love progressing. If we're not growing or progressing, we feel super stagnant and stuck. And I don't want you to ever feel stuck. I want you to feel like you're moving forward, especially with your body and your health, because when you do that, your finances up level, your relationships up level, your career up levels, your lifestyle up levels, and you're making a really big impact on the world. You're free to make that impact. So um, it means a lot to me that you're able to do that. So uh, let me know in any way if I can help you. I'd love to guide you there. Um, if you want the six steps to emotional fitness that I practice daily. That's part of the Body Built by Love course. You can reach out to me anytime about this course um, for information on how to apply for that. And I'm just excited to help you get to that next level. Um, kick some butt. Have a great weekend. I love you guys. And remember that you're limitless. Literally anything you want is possible. So just reach out and grab it.